Hello everyone. So today we're going to talk about linear regression, but we're going to derive the same equation that we saw in the last lecture using probabilistic approach. So in case you haven't watched my first video, I highly recommend because some of the terminology and some of the notations that I'm using here are kind of described over there. But I'll just give a quick recap of what exactly we are seeing in the window right now. So the parenthesis I denotes the ith training sample and yi and xi these are basically the tuple data point that we are kind of given so we are given a data set capital D and we are given that there are these n data points and all of these data points are given in a tuple form x comma y where x denotes the covariate and y denotes the output here if you see there is this phi or feature vector of ith training sample so in a linear regression model, this phi would simply be x comma one. So what I mean is that this phi transpose w would be w one x plus w naught. And in case say you are modeling a quadratic model, then it would be say w two x squared plus w one x plus w naught. So that phi kind of encompasses any information regarding like if you're modeling a linear model or say we're trying to fit a quadratic model, all, all of that information. So in least squared error approach, if you remember, we kind of wrote this error function and we summed over all these squared errors and we were trying to minimize that. So we used some differentiation to find these w star or optimal parameters and we were able to get this linear red line that we saw. So now approaching it probabilistically, we were using this Gaussian distribution to do that. And this Gaussian distribution has these two parameters. One is the standard deviation sigma and the other is the mean. So if you look in this particular slide, uh, what we are trying to do is that given xi, we are trying to find the probability of yi. So this is like a conditional probability that's written and the representation that you see on the left hand side that's exactly what it says probability of yi given xi where i denotes the i training sample so in this particular case the mean is denoted by w transpose times phi of xi and we kind of state this gaussian distribution model as shown so if you look in the picture uh, that's shown here, uh, we can kind of see how graphically this is represented. The line or the linear regression model that we are trying to fit, we are trying to maximize the probability given this x for each of these y values. So for instance, if you look at x equal to minus two line, the peak you're seeing, it's kind of lining up with the data point that's there. So if you see my cursor, the data point lies up here and the probability associated is, with this is quite high. And similarly with x equal to say minus 0.5, we get a very high probability. So our main goal is to find these W star optimal parameters so that the probability of the entire data set is maximized. So that's like the main underlying intuition. And next slide, we're gonna see some math behind it. For each data sample i, uh, we're going to write this probability and our goal is to find the probability of the entire data set D because we want to maximize our chances of getting that data set D as that is given to us. So writing the probability of data set D is like simply taking the product of all these probabilities for each i training sample. Here, this pi sign that you see, this denotes the product of all these probabilities and xi comma yi belong to data set D. And in this particular case, we can do this because the data samples are drawn independently and identically distributed. So identical distribution means that uh, the probability model that you have, it's kind of same for every data sample xi comma yi. So you're using a Gaussian distribution for each of your training samples. So that's why it's an identical distribution. And that's an assumption that we are using here. And independently means that your outcome is not kind of dependent on the previous one. Uh, so it's all these data samples are drawn independently without uh, having any past history affecting us. We just uh, take the, the product of these different probabilities. And once we do that, we get this sort of expression. So this exponential EXP denotes uh, exponential. So when we multiply the probabilities of these n data points, then all the 
terms inside the exponential function, they get added up and eventually we get the same expression that we saw in the last slide. This is actually a vector notation that's shown here. So capital Y denotes the vector of outputs and phi is the feature vector and W is the weight vector that we are trying to find. And now our main goal is to maximize this probability. So we are trying to find W so that P of D is maximized. And in this case, since we are having a minus sign over here, we can change this maximization problem into a minimization problem and we can find this optimal parameters W, which kind of minimize this error. So again, we see that this particular formulation is exactly the same as the least squared errors approach, but uh, the way of deriving it is different. Now, I would like to point one particular case where this linear regression might not work that well. And this would be the motivation behind why we pursue logistic regression, if you guys have heard of, about it. So suppose say in some like the data set that you're given there, the output of each sample is only between minus one and one. If you see the graph on the left side, you can see that your linear model is kind of fitting the data pretty well. And in this particular case, we define this threshold at Y equal to zero. So if our model gives us that Y is greater than zero for some sample X, then we classify it as plus one. Or in case our model says that Y is less than zero, then we classify it as minus one. Now we're going to talk about a case where linear regression might not work that well. So if you see this particular case, uh, the second graph there, you can see that if you have more data points that come at Y equal to one, then the decision boundary shifts. And this is not kind of ideal because if you had more data points towards the right and your decision boundary shifting, then the points that are there around this X equal to zero to two region, this might be classified as minus one. So if you see at X equal to point one or something, then the Y that you see would be negative or less than zero. So that will be classified as minus one, which is not correct. Now we will try to understand why this particular thing happens in this model. The way we do it is we try to plot the loss function associated with each data sample I. In this particular uh, case, uh, the loss function, which is denoted by small l here, we know that it's given by this quadratic expression that we saw earlier as well. So for ith training sample, yi denotes the output and phi is the feature vector that you're using. So in linear regression model, it's going to be simply x1 and in quadratic is going to be x square x1 as these column vector and w is the weight vector. Since we are given that yi square is equal to one, what we can do is that in the numerator, we can multiply by yi and divide it by yi itself. What you will observe is that the numerator expression becomes yi square minus yi times phi of xi transpose times w. And that can be written as this. And since yi squared is one, the denominator is just one. So we get this expression. And now what we are trying to do is we are trying to plot this loss function versus yi times this phi transpose w. So f is called the scoring function, we'll see its use later on when we study about GANs and uh, different models that we have. But for now, you can see that this F or the scoring function is given as phi transpose times W. In this particular case, the red is denoting the quadratic loss or the loss function that we just derived in the last slide or in the previous lecture. So this is simply plotting this particular function and we can clearly see that when yi times f, which is this particular expression, this is one, then the loss function is zero, which is denoted by the minimum point of this red line. And the black line that you see here is the ideal loss function. So if you think about it, for any i training sample, suppose say we are given yi is plus one, then we want to find W parameter so that the F or the scoring function is also plus one there, right? So in this particular case, all the entries that have YI times F greater than zero, their loss function, which is denoted on the Y axis, that is zero. If say for any I training sample, YI is one, then we want the F 
to be greater than zero. And if yi is less than one, then we want f less than zero because that would mean that we have a correct prediction. So in the previous slide, you saw that there was that threshold defined at y equal to zero, right? So here, what we are saying is that if f is greater than zero, then that is classified as plus one. And if f is less than zero, then that is classified as minus one. So in this particular case, when we are trying to write the ideal loss function, what we want is that for correct samples, the loss is zero. And for the incorrect samples, the loss is given by plus one. So that's why you see here that whenever there is an incorrect prediction, that is say if yi is plus one and f is less than zero, then the loss there is given by plus one. So we are trying to penalize that. However, if you see this red line, which our model depicts, it's kind of interesting that for samples which are classified correctly, that is on the farther right side, the loss is still very high, which is not right. So if you see for samples which are on the far right side, either you will have yi as plus one and f will be greater than zero or yi would be minus one and f would be less than zero. So in both of those cases, you will have the scoring function or this yi times f to be very positive and the loss would be associated with that, which is incorrect because you're penalizing terms that are being classified very easily. So because of that reason, we see the decision boundary shifting so that the W parameters that you get or the optimal parameters that you're trying to find, they minimize this loss as well. So that's the shortcoming of this. And that is why we approach classification using logistic regression. So we'll see this in the next lecture, how we kind of fix that. So thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thank you.